All right, Panther fans. Woo! Colin and I just finished. Well, he's actually still streaming. It's a little bit after 3 o'clock. We did three straight hours. My ears are thumping because Kyle and I were in separate rooms talking on the headphones while we've been streaming. So my ears are the thump, the thump, thump, thump. So I'll do the best I can to break this down. We'll go backwards. Um, I already know about Tarasenko. At, towards the end of the day, we traded uh, one of our minor league goaltenders, Ludovic Waver. I believe that's how it's pronounced. I had heard some good things about him, but then it wasn't working out, so we traded him to Pittsburgh for a 32-year-old goaltender. Who's, it's basically an AHL deal. Um, if he ever had to play for us, that would mean lots of bad things that happen. So we'll, we'll just leave it at that. That's an AHL deal for their postseason run and everything in case because you do need a third goalie going into the playoffs, and Spencer Knight right now is our third goalie, and it looks like that's the way it's going to remain. Um, we, What's interesting is on the chat, uh, I cracked the joke early on, maybe an hour and a half in, I cracked the joke that watch the Panthers pick up, when we were talking about the guys on waivers, I said, watch us pick up somebody that nobody's ever heard of, and then in five years we think he's the next Forsling. And then we picked up some 22-year-old kid, uh, who's also Swedish, born foot, born foot, born foot. I don't know. You want to? You have to tell me how to how to say his name. Um, he's only 22. He's got an NHL experience. He played. He was the first round pick of the Kings 2016, I think. I think he entered the league at 18. He played for a few years. The one year he played like 70 games for the Kings, and then the last three seasons he's only played like 13 games, including, I think, one for Vegas this year, and then he's been injured. He's on IR, so he counts against the cap. I don't know what... I'm assuming that's just a project, but being that um, we picked him up on waivers, he has to count against the salary cap on the NHL roster size right now. I don't know. I don't think that that's our depth guy. I mean, I don't think he leapfrogs Mahur or Boliskis, I would assume not. So it looks like um, in terms of defense, we're going with the guys that we have. We did not pick up um, we didn't pick up anybody. There's a couple of guys that might have been available. The Flyers got Eric Johnson. Um, Dumba went and there was no salary retained. We kind of ran out of money and ammunition to pay teams to retain salary. So um, I would have preferred one more solid defenseman um, that had played in the playoffs before, but it didn't happen. But we did add Kyle Apozo to the roster. For those of you who think that that name sounds familiar, think Trotrek was tripped, and that'll bring back the memories for you. Um, 35 years old, still has some gas left in the tank. He was Buffalo's captain. We got him for a seventh. And a fifth, I'll have to. I'll put the. I'll put it here, like right now. Up. I. I. We were talking so many deals. I've forgotten. But basically, it was like a seventh and a fifth, or a seventh and a sixth that becomes a fourth or a fifth if we win the cup. Something like the peanuts. Basically, peanuts again. Um. Now where he slots in, one of two places. Either Nick Cousins is off the ice, and Akpozo's on the fourth line. It'd be Stenlin with Akpozo and Lomberg. Or Agpozo is first guy off the bench, and you keep in Stenlin, or you keep Cousins on the ice. And I know everybody's going to say, bye, Nick Cousins, and all that. Um, I kind of feel bad for Nick Cousins, because it wasn't but a couple of days ago, he was scoring two goals on the second line with Bennett and Kachuk, trying to save his job. And, and, and now he gets knocked down to the fourth, and now he might have just got knocked off of the fourth. And at the same time, don't misconstrue the Gadjevich uh, extension. Cousins doesn't have a contract. Gadjevich is the Cousins replacement. So I don't know what Nick Cousins did, <laughs> but he, in the, in the space of a couple days, he lost his job next to Benedict Kachuk. He lost his job on the fourth line, and he had his roster spot for next year already fulfilled by a guy that's a lot younger and cheaper. So he's not had a good week. So no Nick Cousins disparaging in the comments. He's human. He, he, he scored the goal that 
won the Leafs series for us last year. So on a human level, I kind of feel bad for the guy. I'm glad he's still on the team, and I hope he gets to raise the hardware this year before he sets off into the sunset somewhere else next year, most likely. Um, in terms of what Ocpozo will bring to this team, he's not the fastest skater in the world, okay? So that's there's that. But he does bring experience, that old word grit, and all of that. Um, he's got the right attitude. He already was on ESPN talking about how he loves how Florida plays. He loves the idea of coming here and learning the system and, and playing for Maurice. So it's all it's all good. That was a move that I don't think anybody kind of really saw. I mean, we all thought maybe we'd add one more guy, but Ocpozo was not on the list. I didn't see Ocpozo's name on anybody's list. Um, so when that came out, again, I would also like to thank Bill Zito. I know you're watching. It's much appreciated. Both trades, both trades went down one minute before I was already scheduled to go live. That's, that's just a coincidence, right? It's just a coincidence that the year after the, the Kachuk and the prediction and all of that, that both trades go down one minute before I'm scheduled to go live. He even skipped the day that we didn't go live. Now, come on. Come on, now. <laughs> uh, six to one half dozen of another. So I, the answer to the question is, yes, I like what we did the trade deadline. I certainly like what we did to the forward group. I know I didn't want to change the chemistry. I don't really think we changed the chemistry a whole lot because nobody left. Okay? Defensively, um... Okay, I'm fine. Because when you when you look at the guys that were out there, I mean, none of them really were guys, with a couple rare exceptions that we couldn't afford. But any of the veteran-type guys that were out there, they really weren't going to just knock Kulikov off the ice. So they still probably would have been 70, you know what I mean? Um, Josh Mahura, bro, look, unless all six defensemen stay healthy the entire playoffs, Josh Maher is going to have to play better than he did so far this year. He hasn't been terrible, but he's just kind of been like scatterbrained. He has not played a lot. So I'm a little bit queasy about him being the first guy off the bench on the defense. I'm not going to lie. I kind of would have thought maybe if we could have swung a deal for a veteran defenseman who's been in the playoffs, who can kind of come in and settle things down, when a guy gets injured, you know, like a Mark Stahl. I know I'm not saying he was available, but somebody like that. Um, so instead, we're going to have Mahura, who is on his second year and hasn't played a lot this year, and Belinskis, who ain't ever played before in the league until this year. That's our playoff defensive depth. So dudes need to be staying healthy. <laughs> Dudes need to be staying healthy. I think there, there's, um, uh, there's no doubt about that, right? And now it does help that the forwards play defense, okay? Um, and I guess if we get too many defensive injuries, we'll just throw Nick Cousins out there on the defense next to Kulikov. <laughs> I don't know. I feel bad for the guy. All right. Short and sweet. I like it. Um, well, if I had to grade us, I mean, considering the... Considering what we had to work with, I give Zito an A minus. But that could turn into an A plus plus if this guy born foot, born foot. I don't know. If that dude turns into Gustav Forsling, I will come back and adjust this to A plus plus. The way the reason why it's a minus is because I kind of thought maybe, like I said, we would have added some veteran depth on defense. There wasn't a lot out there. Salary became an issue, and Vegas is getting Tomas Hurdle because they just they put the mascot on LTIR, and somehow they got more cap. It's fine. It's fine because one of two things is going to happen. Either somebody is going to celebrate beating Vegas before they get to the finals, or if we end up playing Vegas again in the finals, should it end up that way, Everybody except for Vegas fans will be rooting for the Panthers. So that'll be good for the stream. That'll be good for the channel. <laughs> so, all right, Panther fans. I'm going to take a break now because that was a three-hour stream. Plus, my, like I said, my ears are thumping. I don't hear a thing I'm saying. I might be yelling at this point, but I wouldn't hear it because, like, I've lost hearing. So, 
Uh, tomorrow the game is at 4 o'clock. I believe that's correct. So the stream will start one half hour before the game. Sunday I will be live like I normally end um, with the reviews. And then Monday it probably will not be much of anything going on. Because that's the day that Kyle goes to the airport and he'll be flying to Florida. Now, um, two things are going to happen. It might happen tomorrow. My, one of the things Saturday is like, I'm going to have a contest. It's going to be a live stream. It's going to be a contest where I'm going to ask you guys a trivia question. and You guys don't have to know the answer. It won't be a long stream, so show up because it's going to be really quick and easy. The contest is because Tom Esoteric Veritas, who writes the articles, has an extra ticket to go to the Lightning game next Saturday, and that's the game Kyle is going to be at. So we're going to run a contest to determine who gets that ticket. So I'm talking with him later on today or tomorrow. We'll sort all those details out. At the same time, at some point this weekend, I will have a community post out about the meetup with Kyle at that lightning game. Um, I was supposed to have that information to you last week, but Brother Gene's mom has is in bad shape with cancer, so there was a there, we had to make sure he was going to be able to go. There was some there was some doubt there that he was going to be able to go, and I was going to have to make some other arrangements. But looks like he's going to be able to go. So Kyle will be at the lightning game two hours before faceoff. So this weekend I will have the information out about that meetup. And no, I won't be here. I will be here. Uh, I will be here selling all of Kyle's um, belongings for money and um, streaming games by myself. That's it. I picked it. He. We have a lot of. We have some time off, so it'll work out. The Panthers play the 16th. That he's going to that game, and then we don't play again to the 21st. He comes home the 22nd, so we'll be all right. All right, Panther fans. I'm glad that's over. We don't have to talk about who we're going to get anymore. I'm so glad. That is over. I will see you all tomorrow.